for watching us live. It's time now for our news review. Please stay with us. Iraqi Foreign Minister Fouad Hussein says his country does not need any more U.S. combat troops as it has its own fighters. Hussein made the comment in an interview with Wall Street Journal. He said what Iraq needs is cooperation in intelligence and training as well as Air Force support. Earlier this week, Iraqi Prime Minister Mustafa al qadhimi also emphasized American combat troops should leave his country. He's set to meet with U.S. President Joe Biden on Monday in Washington. They're expected to issue a statement that calls for U.S. combat troops to leave Iraq by the end of the year. In January 2020, if you recall, Iraq's parliament issued a resolution demanding the expulsion of American forces. That followed the U.S. assassination of top Iranian general Qasem Soleimani and Iraqi commander Abu Mahdi al-Muhandis. Joining me to discuss that issue in this news review will be first Mr. Saad al-Mutallabi. He is an independent politician who joins us via Skype, sorry, via SNG, that would be a uh, satellite from Baghdad, as well as uh, Mr. Tim Anderson right next to him. He's a writer and director with the Center for Counter Hegemonic Studies <coughs> via Skype out of Sydney, Australia. Gentlemen, it's good to have you with us. Let's get uh, the reaction to what I just read from Mr. Mutallabi in Baghdad. Mr. Mutallabi, what do you think about uh, what uh, has been said regarding the expulsion of the uh, U.S. forces by, by, by foreign minister of your country, sir. Uh, thank you very much. There are two uh, versions of events here. First version is that the parliament, as you clearly said, uh, voted last year on the expulsion of the American troops. And the second version is that the Americans themselves, in their uh, latest literature and uh, communiques, are talking about withdrawing uh, American troops from the Middle East as they did in Afghanistan. So it is understandable that the Americans need to withdraw their troops from Iraq since we don't have any uh, additional threats uh, for the state of Iraq, either ISIS or any other uh, dangers in the region, the Iraqi forces are sufficient enough uh, with capabilities that uh, are capable now of uh, stopping any uh, incursion or any uh, um, attempt or, uh, to, to attack Iraq. So, therefore, I, I do believe that's a combination of two. And uh, the foreign minister, Iraqi foreign minister, he was uh, right in saying that the Iraqis do not need mm -hmm. any more uh, American troops uh, on the ground, and only maybe intelligence uh, assistance will be uh, will be welcomed, and maybe some type of air force support. Okay. Uh, other than that, uh, I, I think it's. Uh, uh, it's not right to ask the Americans to stay mm -hmm. uh, as a fighting force in Iraq since, as I said, we have enough um, uh, trained people and enough equipment to face any uh, future incursion. Um, and the Americans also think that uh, it is pos better for them to keep a better relationship between Iraq and the United States by pulling their troops out mm -hmm. and not giving an excuse for mm -hmm. the resistance to pound them with missiles every now and then. Uh, so it works on the benefits of two countries. Iraq will get rid of the Americans and the Americans will maybe uh, amend the relationship between Iraq and the United States. Okay. Uh, Mr. Anderson and Sidney, what do you think about what's just been said, you know, both by the Prime Minister and our other guests from Baghdad itself? Uh, do you think it's high time or it's been actually past high time that the American forces left uh, Iraq altogether? It's certainly past high time, but I'm afraid the headlines are rather misleading. Mm. Uh, if you read the detail here of what uh, the Foreign Minister is talking about, and apparently he's setting up the, uh, the scene for a statement, a joint statement on Monday when the, when the uh, Mr. al Academy is in Washington, is not about the withdrawal of US forces. There's quite a contradiction here with what the Parliament passed last mm. year and what the government is doing. They are talking about combat troops um, leaving and training and intelligence and air power remaining there. Now, I don't think that's going to satisfy the resistance groups in Iraq because they know very well 
the extent of betrayals of U.S. forces in the past. Yeah, it was the combat uh, troops that actually uh, you know, shot the uh, the entourage and the cars of both the commanders of uh, Iran's Quds Force. The uh, actually um, that particular division of Iran's of, um, um, IRGC, the Quds Force, uh, you know, Martyr Soleimani, as well as Abu Mahdi al Mohandes, and r it was right after that that the Parliament asked for the expulsion of those forces. If no combat troops remain on the ground, uh, uh, Mr. Mutalabi. If no combat troops remain on the ground, and only intelligence, like you said, or training, do you really think that the resistance would still be unhappy, like Mr. S Mr. Anderson says? Uh, no, I don't think so. Uh, I think uh, if the Americans withdraw their uh, fighting forces and the Air Force stop uh, bombarding or attacking uh, the PMWs, the PMUs, the public mobilization units. Uh, if they stop doing that, then there's no re reason for the resistance to be unhappy. Uh, the, the demand of, for the resistance is that the Americans stop their aggression against Iraq. And uh, having trainers or um, advisors, that is uh, possibly will be, we will be welcomed. All right. And uh, Mr. Anderson, any final comments on that? You know, where do you think this is going? And it's very interesting, isn't it? And when you think about the same scenario happening in Afghanistan, you know, a while ago, just like Mr. Mutalabi said at the beginning, you also have the resurgence of the Taliban. Uh, to what extent, you know, given Iraq's situation, which is different in, in many respects, to what extent do you think that could be the scenario, one way or another, after at least, like you said, combat troops leave Iraq? I think they are. I think the occupation in Iraq, which is closely linked, by the way, to the occupation in Syria, is fragile. I think that more pressure is going to drive them out of Iraq and out of Syria. But in the meantime, I think we're looking at the way uh, uh, Mr. Hussein, the foreign minister, mentioned, is a joint statement affirming the presence of the US um, in Iraq and in relation to intelligence and air power. And let's remember when Daesh took over Mosul and was about to take over Baghdad, when Iraq was in a very desperate situation, they called for help. The US was withholding their air power, was withholding aircraft that they had, that the Iraqi government had purchased, you know. So the betrayals go back a very long way. And I'm pretty sure that a lot of, a lot of people in Iraq are not going to be happy with the statement that's coming up next Monday. Mm -hmm. Many, many thanks. That's Mr. Tim Anderson, writer and director with the Center for Counter-Hegemonic Studies out of Sydney, Australia. I also had the pleasure of hosting Saad al Mutalibi. He is an independent politician who joined us uh, via satellite of Baghdad. Gentlemen, you have a very good day wherever you are. Thank you very much, you, uh, viewers, for uh, being with us and uh, watching this edition of News Review.